I almost, <laughs> I almost feel like this is giving Winifred Sanderson vibes right now. What's up guys, today we're gonna to be testing out viral makeup hacks. I am so excited about today's video. I feel like I've been stuck in such a makeup rut the last couple of years and just doing things the same way over and over. And one of my goals for 2023 is to just up my game a little bit and get better at applying makeup. So I figured why not just take you guys along for the ride and you can learn with me. So let's go ahead and jump right in and get started. Okay, let's start with the first hack, which is foundation. And this is the video that I found. So let's take a look. Let's talk about applying foundation with a fluffy brush. You might look at this brush and think that it's fluffy and nice for blush or for bronzer, but it's actually perfect for applying foundation. This foundation is incredible, but it's super full coverage and that's not what I'm going for today. That's where this baby comes in. A brush like this would be more full coverage because it's more dense to pack on the foundation and build it up. With something fluffy like this, it shears out the foundation even when it's super full coverage. Let me show you. I'm just tapping it on and blending it out with fast motion. So I'm swiping and not stippling. Almost how you would a powder. Watch these spots disappear as I use the tiniest bit of foundation. Make sure you get your neck. Look how much I have left. This is the number 55 Pro Airbrush by Sephora. I know you're wondering. So I thought that tip was super interesting and I've been wanting to try it ever since I saw this video. So today I'm gonna to be using the Juvia's Place I Am Magic Natural Radiance Foundation. This is a new foundation and it claims to be medium to full coverage. I normally like a little bit less coverage. So I'm hoping that a brush like this will just shear it out to the type of coverage that I like. So I'm gonna do what she did. I'm just gonna pump a little bit onto my hand. Okay, so I just did one pump and she just kind of dipped the brush right into the foundation like this. By the way, this is a BK Beauty 104 brush and this is the one I would normally use for powder products. Whoa, that's a lot of foundation. I think I picked up too much. I'm just gonna spread it over here on this side. And she said to just kind of work very quickly. Ah, my hair got caught, okay. It's funny because years ago when I first started my channel, I actually did use a fluffy brush for foundation. I don't really remember what the results were, but at the time I was filming down in the kitchen and I didn't bring a foundation brush down. I didn't feel like going back upstairs. So I just used a brush like this. And I remember getting a really nasty comment on that video saying like, you shouldn't be on YouTube. You don't even know what a foundation brush is. That brush is obviously for powder. And look at the trend now. There's so many videos on TikTok and Instagram reels talking about using more of a fluffy brush to apply. So I, it just goes to show you that there really are no rules for makeup. I think you should just use whatever gives you the best result and just forget about the so-called rules. So this foundation is quite full coverage, even with this fluffy brush. And when I first started blending it, it was kind of streaky and it wasn't blending into my skin, but I just kind of kept going. The more that I blended, the better it looked. And I only had to dip my brush into the foundation once. There's still a ton of it left on my hand and I feel like my skin is completely covered. I don't need to add any more. So let me just zoom you guys in really quick and I'll show you what the foundation looks like on my skin. So as you can see, this has great coverage. I think it would have been even heavier and possibly more makeup-y looking had I used a more dense foundation brush. So I like that this one sheared it out a little bit. I really didn't need to use as much product at all. And this foundation has a little bit of radiance to it, but it's not over the top. I don't feel like it's very sparkly. It just gives an nice lit from within glow. And like I said, this is way more full coverage than I would normally wear, but applying it with a fluffy brush really seemed to give it a very perfected look. So I'm happy with this technique. I'll definitely try it even on my lighter coverage foundations and see how that works. Next up for concealer, I saw a very similar technique by celebrity makeup artist, Jamie Greenberg. So let's take a look at that. I'm Jamie Greenberg, celebrity makeup artist, and let's get to it. Instead of using your fingers or traditional makeup brush, use an eyeshadow brush, a blending eyeshadow brush. Lightly blend the color on in the corner of the eye and on the outside of the eye. Always start with less because that might be all you need. You can always add more, but less is more in this area, especially if you're super texturized. If this is really one of your problems, you wanna make sure not to set the area with powder but instead set it with a setting spray. 
I just love her. I think she has the most amazing tips. So I'm gonna try this out with the NYX Bear With Me Concealer. I was gonna use the Catrice True Skin, but I feel like I don't really need that much concealer because the Juvia's Place Foundation was so full coverage. I'm just gonna go in with something a little bit lighter. By the way, I didn't even mention my shade in the Juvia's Place. This is the shade Cairo, and I'm using the NYX Bear With Me in the shade Light. So I'm just putting a little bit on my hand and kind of blending it out so it's not just in one clump. And I'm just gonna take the tiniest little amount on this brush. This is the Sigma All Perfect All Purpose Buffer. So this is normally like a big crease brush that I would use. So I'm just going to start blending this in the outer corner of my eye. She said to just use like little circles. Wow, that actually blends it right into the skin and it just disappears. This is a pretty forgiving concealer anyway, but I'm just going to do the inner corner. I love that this isn't caking the concealer on and I think this helps you because sometimes if you're like me, you probably use more concealer than you probably need. I usually pump it out into my hand and then apply it with my fingers, but I usually end up blending it way over here because I used so much product and because this brush is really fluffy, it ensures that you really don't use too much product. All right, so I really didn't blend it too far underneath my eye. Most of my darkness is on the outer corner and then the inner corner. So that's just what I focused on. Let's just do the other eye really quickly. The one thing about this concealer that I'm not crazy about is that it creases, but she said to use a setting spray rather than a powder. And I actually saw another tip and I can't remember where I saw it now, so I don't have the video, but they said instead of using a setting spray all over your face, if you don't want your concealer to crease, to just spray a little setting spray on your fingers and then just pat it on like that. So I think that's probably the technique I'm gonna do rather than spray it all over my face. Okay, so before this creases, I'm gonna take the Milani Make It Last setting spray. I just sprayed a little bit on my ring finger and I'm just going to make sure this isn't creased. Pat this on right here like this. And I'll do the other side. All right, I'm just gonna let this dry for like 30 seconds. And let me zoom you guys in and you can see what it looks like up close. I think this is looking pretty good right now. And the reason that I wanted to use the NYX Bear With Me Concealer is because that one always creases on me. So I thought this would be an awesome test to see if this technique really works. Next, let's move on to a big trouble spot that I have and that is brows. So let's take a look at this video. Instead of applying your brow gel like this, try this. Brush the gel back and forth, coating your brows thoroughly, then brush it upwards. And then with your finger, just push the brow hairs up until they're flat on your skin. Take your brow pencil and fill in any sparse areas. You can add a little bit of concealer. This is going to give you that beautiful laminated look that the brow freeze or the brow soap gives you, but without any of that. Okay, so this is really interesting because I always used to fill in my brows first and then apply the gel afterwards. But for me, my brow hairs kind of grow sideways and down. They don't grow up. So what used to happen to me is I would fill in my brows first, then I would take a brow gel and start pushing them upward. But what would happen is then my brows are in a totally different spot. So I would expose more bald areas that I would have to then fill in further. And I found that I ended up just applying so much more color to my brows that it would start to look unnatural and just kind of overdone. So I love the idea of using the gel first and then going in and just filling them in exactly where they need to be. So I'm gonna take the new Milani Stay Put Liquid Brow Wax. I really like this stuff a lot and I'm gonna do what she did and just fill them in kind of this way, like scrunch them up a little. I feel like that really helps to coat the product on. I never thought to do that. I usually just kind of go in the direction of my brows, but wow, I can see how this definitely, I mean, it added a lot more product to my brows than would normally be there. And it actually does make my brow look a little bit thicker and fluffier already compared to the other side. Then because my brows are a little bit damp, I don't wanna use a brow pencil because I think it's probably not gonna to stick to where all the waxy stuff is. So I'm gonna use the NYX Lift and Snatch Brow Pen and this is in the shade Ash Brown. And now my brows are already in place, so I'm just gonna fill in the areas that they need to be filled in. So just making tiny little hair-like strokes. 
This is my brow that's always higher, so I like to fill it in on the bottom a little bit more, and I fill this one in more on the top just to try to balance them out a little. Next, I'm just gonna take a spoolie and just comb through where I used the pen before it completely dries. And yeah, I mean, there's a huge difference here in my brows, and that was so super easy. So let's see if I can make the other side match. I'm gonna do the same thing, just kind of rough up the brow a little bit and then go back. You know what I forgot to do with the other one? She said to press it in with your finger to make it lie flat against your skin. I mean, I kind of felt like it was laying flat anyway, so I didn't really need to do that, but I will try it anyway. Okay, so I'm just gonna, yeah, just press this into my skin. Oh, I kind of don't like how that looks. It made it look sort of clumpy and not quite as fluffy. I think I'm just gonna leave it alone and just use the brow gel. This brow definitely needs more help than this one did, so I'm gonna have to fill this one in quite a bit more. And that's where I always go wrong and ended up making it look not the same. So like I said, this one, I tend to fill it in more on the top. My brows are actually the same height. If I relax my face, this one isn't higher, but I just tend to hold this one higher, which makes them look uneven, like when I'm talking, so. I just like to try to make this one a little tiny bit higher just to kind of make them match. Okay, wow, that was so much easier to use the gel first because then I could follow the guide and the line of my brows rather than trying to fill them in when they're growing at all sorts of like weird angles. Next, when it comes to eyeshadow, I was looking up tips and tricks for hooded eyes and I came across this eye look. She looks so gorgeous. So I wanted to follow her tutorial, but it is a little bit longer. So I'm gonna pause it in between each step and and that way it'll be a little bit easier to follow. So let's look at the first part. I'm gonna show you my favorite makeup techniques that I like to use on my hooded eyes. So when you have hooded eyes, you basically have a full of skin that covers your crease. So you have no visible crease and your eyelid can seem a little bit smaller because that skin is covering it. So I'm taking my transition color all the way from the inner corner to the outer corner. And I like to take this quite high so it gives the illusion of a more lifted eye. Okay, so that is one thing that I'm definitely guilty of not doing. I never take my eyeshadow too high and I do have a lot of space in between my eyelashes and my brows. Like there's a lot of room there, but my lid actually ends really low down. So the rest of this is basically just like brow bone. And there's a bone that kind of sticks out, like it juts out right here. I might have deep set eyes, I don't know. But in the past when I tried to put eyeshadow up really high because that bone is sticking out and it's not really smooth and flat, I always felt like the eyeshadow ended up looking messy. So I just keep it a little bit lower down, but I'm gonna try doing what she said because it's been a while since I've tried that. And a lot of you guys too have commented and asked why I don't put my eyeshadow up higher. So let's try it. I'm going to use the Doll Squad palette from Doll 10 and I'm just gonna take the lighter transition color. It's kind of a warmer brown like she was using. And this is the BK Beauty 201 brush. So she basically put her transition shade all the way into like the inner part of her eye over here. And she just put it way up close to the brow. I love this palette, by the way. It's one of my favorite neutral palettes of all time. I compared it in a video to the new Makeup by Mario palette. It looks actually very similar, but I like the formula of this one even better. I love the shimmer shades more because the ones in the Mario palette are kind of glittery and they're like toppers. So it's just an all around amazing palette. The formula is really, really good. And the shadows are talc free as well. Okay, let's watch the next part. With my darker colors, I like to concentrate them more on the outer corner of my eye. So you can see all the definition is on the outer corner and this inner corner is nice and light so it gives the appearance of a bigger eyelid. Okay, so she did her darker color kind of on the outer corner here. So I'm gonna pick up this darker chocolatey brown right there. And this is the BK Beauty 202 brush which is a slightly smaller fluffy brush but I might actually wanna use something even smaller than this. We'll see how it goes. I'm just gonna focus this on the outer corner like she did and start to blend it back a little bit toward the middle, but I'm not gonna go all the way because she said to kind of keep it more toward the outer edge of the eye. I think doing your eyeshadow this way definitely adds a bit of lift to the outer corner. And I believe this is actually an all matte look too, which is something that's new for me. I almost always use a shimmer shade on my lid. All right, so that's done. Let's look at the next step. Now I'm just taking a light cream shade and I'm just blending that right up to where that transition color was. So this is gonna open the eye even more and give us a fake lid. Okay, so I'm gonna take the ivory shade right here and just apply it to my lid like she did. This is the Sigma Diffused Blend Brush. It's kind of more of a flat brush. 
And she said doing this will give you kind of more of a fake lid. I feel like a light color on the lid just opens everything up. Okay, yeah, so that light shade definitely seems to open up the eye a little bit. All right, let's see what she does next. Now for liner, I'm gonna be using an eyeshadow today, but it's basically the same technique I would use for a liquid liner. I'm just following my lower lash line and bringing that wing upward. And then I'm just taking that about halfway into my eyes. When doing your liner, you want to be looking straight into a mirror and completely relax your eye. So I've just added a little half lash and this is the final look. Okay, so she did her liner with shadow. I'm gonna do the same. So this is the BK Beauty 208 brush. It's a tiny little eyeliner brush. And I'm gonna go back into this deeper chocolatey brown shade. And she started under the lower lash line here and then just went straight up and did the wing like this. And then she connected it to the top lash line in sort of a little triangle. And then she filled in the triangle with eyeshadow. All right, so that just gave a little bit of lift to my eye. I normally do my liner from the top lash line and across. I don't usually start at the bottom. So it's a little bit of a different look for me, but I'd love to hear what you guys think down below. Next, let's check out a mascara tip. So this might not be news for some of you, but for me, I've never tried it this way before. So let's take a look. Have you been applying your mascara wrong the whole time? Let's see how you can improve your mascara game. I see most of the women doing the mascara like this. Or this. It's the same thing. Or if you blink on the wand or do this, it's basically the same thing. Let me show you my technique now. I'm using the same mascara. So you take your mascara wand and you place it right at the base of your lashes and then you twist the brush as you slowly blink. This is going to help the mascara to be deposited right at the base of your lashes, most of it. So it's going to look like you have tight line. By doing so, you are pushing your lashes from the very base and you will give length. Do you see how much longer and fuller these are? Your lashes are a lot longer, a lot fuller than you think. Try this method and let me know. Okay, so my method was always to take the brush and then wiggle it back and forth like this in a back and forth motion because growing up, all of the fashion magazines always said to do that to deposit the most color to your lashes. Then when YouTube came around, I saw a lot of people just doing what she did in the beginning, like just combing straight up or blinking onto the wand. So I'm gonna try her rolling method and see how it is. So I'm gonna put the wand right here and as I blink, Roll it. It definitely does deposit color right to the roots of your lashes. Okay, so <laughs> this did give me really, really big lashes, yes, but they also look super, super clumpy. I'm gonna maybe try to like comb them out a little bit and see. By the way, this is the new Milani highly rated lash extension tubing mascara. I probably should have used a formula that's not quite as wet as this one, but I think what I'm gonna do is try my regular method on this side and we'll see like how they compare. So what I would normally do is just apply the mascara and do like a little wiggle of the brush and then kind of comb it through. Okay, so I actually do feel like this side gave me a bit more lift and more curl and my lashes just look bigger over here, but the problem is they look more clumpy at the same time. So I'm gonna have to try this technique with a different mascara at some point and maybe that'll help. I'm just gonna do her method over here and just try to make these a little bit bigger so that they match. Okay, let's check out a blush hack that I came across. Just gonna do a little bit of on my finger and we're just going. Apparently, if you mix your lip liner with the highlight, it would give you the most stunning shiny cheek color. I love it. Okay, so I've seen a lot of people on social media doing this where they draw a lip liner on their cheek, which obviously it's dry. I've actually tried using a lip liner as a blush before and it really doesn't blend on its own. So I think adding the liquid highlighter should help it to blend. <laughs> we'll see, this might end up to be a total mess, but this is my Rare Beauty lip liner in the shade Worthy. So I'm just gonna do like a little zigzag like they did. Just maybe two of them like this. And then I'm gonna take my Milani Conceal and Perfect Liquid Highlighter. And this is in shade one, Lunar. So I'm just gonna add a couple of dots. And then let's see if that helps the lip liner to blend out. 
Oh yeah, it actually does. It blends really easily. But strangely, mixing the highlighter with the lip liner really kind of took down the glow of the highlighter. It hardly looks glowy. It's maybe just the slightest bit, but it's actually really subtle. I don't know if I need more. Let me see. This is also kind of a lighter color. I'm just gonna put like one dot of the highlighter this time. Let's see. I mean, honestly, this color makes a beautiful blush, and if you use it on your lips too, then you'll be perfectly coordinated. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do the other side. Okay, so I actually really love this tip. I think if you're somebody who is more of a highlighter phobe, if you have texture on your cheeks and you don't like a lot of glow, mixing the highlighter in with something matte, like a lip liner, really takes down most of the shine and the highlighter just gives really like a barely there glow. But I think this is so pretty and I love the idea of having the same color blush and lip color because like I said, sometimes I'll put on a blush that's a little more cool toned and then I'll pick a lip color that I think is cool tone and then when I put it on it's warm and it looks like it clashes with my cheeks so I like the idea of just having like the exact same color moving on to lips I saw this really interesting tip to make your lips look fuller so let's check it out stop overlining your lips and start oval lining the technique oval lining comes off from drawing an oval first of all you're gonna start by using two lines from your cupid's bow just like this and you could draw them as high or as low as you want you want to focus on the middle of your lip and you want it to look very pouty so you're going to connect these lines from each side starting from one line you could close your lips to do it and then feel free to fill them in while you're connecting them and you're going to do the same thing for the other side basically you're going to connect them all together till they look like an oval and you're not going to overline any else in your lips but that oval so notice when you close your lips it looks like an oval. Feel free to clean whatever you have extra popping out and don't forget you're not supposed to overline anywhere else in your lips. It can get a little messy. Go on some lip gloss and thank me later. Notice how pouty they are and you didn't even touch the rest of your lip. You literally just touched the middle by oval lining. So I actually thought this was a pretty interesting tip that I hadn't seen anywhere else before. So I don't really know if I necessarily need the dot. I mean, the whole idea is just to kind of do a circle with your lip liner like that. So just to focus right in the middle. So I'm just going to overline on the top. And go down and around and then I'm gonna start down here and go back up I almost <laughs> I almost feel like this is giving Winifred Sanderson vibes right now okay so I'm just gonna kind of color in the rest of my lips but I'm not gonna overline anymore Next, she applied a lip gloss, so I'm just gonna use this clean fresh one from CoverGirl. This is the yummy gloss in the shade Lavender. All right, so what do you guys think? I do really think it added a little bit of volume to my lips and made it look a little bit like more poutier, I guess. All right, guys, so here's the finished look. I really do like the way that my makeup looks today overall. I loved the foundation and concealer hacks. I think those were brilliant, and I definitely will use fluffier brushes to apply both in the future. I do really like putting my eyeshadow up higher as well. I think it came out really nice and you could see it better. The only thing is it's really difficult to blend in that area with my brow bone sticking out so far, or it's not even like my brow bone, it's like the socket. It starts kind of right up here and it juts out like a little shelf so I feel like this always looks kind of more unblended so I'll have to just kind of play with that a little bit more but I do feel like it does give my eyes a little bit more of a lift putting it higher as far as the mascara trick I don't know I'm gonna have to try it with a drier formula because this one is just too wet and I felt like it deposited way too much product and it made my lashes look a little bit clumpier than they normally would, but it did add so much lift. So I was actually very impressed with that. I also thought the blush technique was kind of fun and interesting. I mean, it's another way to use up lip liners in your collection if you have some just hanging around. If you use them as blushes, you could really create a nice coordinated look between your cheeks and lips. And then also the oval lining technique. I really do feel like it worked. I think my lips look a little bit fuller. So I really like that as well. I'd love to hear from you guys. Do you feel like you learned something 
something from today's video? Were you aware of these techniques before and have you been doing them? I'd just love to hear your thoughts down below. Also, if you're new here and you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Also, if you like makeup tips and tricks, I'm gonna go ahead and put another one of my videos right here for you to check out next if you have some time. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you being here so, so much, and I hope to see you all in my next video. Take care, guys. Bye.